When it comes to applying to a highly selective university, a student's grades and activities aren't enough. Admissions counselors want to get to know a potential student and learn why he or she is the best fit for their university. That's why letters of recommendation are so important. This video will help you write a great letter of recommendation for any school. Here to help is college insider Douglas Christiansen. He's Vanderbilt University's Vice Provost for Enrollment and Dean of Admissions. Admissions officers, we spend a lot of time on reading those letters of recommendation because it truly helps us understand who the student is. Why is a letter of recommendation so important? We are looking at academics, the rigor of courses, class rank, test scores, and we have all of that. But what really makes the application come alive and sing for the admissions committee is the ability to understand the student as described in another person's voice. I will tell you that as you go up further in the selectivity rate, every piece of that application becomes more critical in that student's progression of being admitted or denied. So for example, at Vanderbilt, probably about 90 plus percent of our students that were denied last year could have come to Vanderbilt and done the work just fine. So it's not an issue of work and academic ability, it's the issue of fit and what that student would bring to the community. What's the first step I should take? You need to make sure you know who you're writing for. We really are looking for these teacher recommendations and the college counselor recommendation of people that can help us triangulate all the data in the application that really helps us understand this student. Talk to the student and say to the student, why is it that you want to go to this school? Help me understand why you want to go to this university and what has made that so exciting to you that you want to apply there. Responsibility is just not yours. It is the student's responsibility to prepare you, help you understand what they're looking at. Don't, it's not the last minute, just write the letter for me. It's they have to vest in what you're going to vest, I mean, in the time. What's the difference between a counselor and a teacher recommendation? We really want the college counselor to talk about the context of the school, the context of the student body, whereas we want the teachers, and where it will help your students the best, is to really think about telling the story about the individual. But I would caution also, while you talk about the intensity, that it doesn't become a description that's half about the high school and not about the student. It is the intensity of the student within the high school. Should I have the student's transcripts when I write the letter of recommendation? I'll tell you that's a weakness and a strength because sometimes if the transcript's in hand, don't let it pull you into just regurgitating what we already know because we have the transcript too. What do you mean by writing about intangibles? Well, so kind of a tangible, we, we know their class rank, we know their grades, we know the rigor of their courses, we know their test scores. The intangible is much more who is the individual and how did the student go about their studies? How did they think about their courses? How did they think about being a member of a classroom? How did they think about teamwork? How did they think about pulling multiple concepts together? A grade is hard to demonstrate that in a course, but the way a student learns and adds to the educational environment is something that really is critical as we go through the admissions process. Their maturity, that's a critical piece. If you can talk about their maturity, academic maturity, social maturity, community maturity, we're not looking for someone who wants to just get a 4-0. We really want somebody who wants to come and learn. How do I make my letter unique without going over the top? When we think about the letter of recommendation, we're not looking for the, the most horrific thing a student's gone through. 
We're not looking for someone who um, has had the most positive thing happen in their life to them. Now that could be the case, but it is being authentic. What we're talking about is what is unique that we can differentiate that student from thousands of other applications. So as you're kind of sitting there, put yourself in the mind of an admissions officer and what makes this student stand out in whatever particular way you want to describe that that helps us just know who the student is. Here's an example of an average letter of recommendation. Dear admissions counselor, it is with great pleasure I recommend Mary to your university. Mary has been a student of mine this entire year in AP Physics. She is always prepared for class and completes assignments in a timely, orderly fashion. Mary is the student body president as well as captain of girls lacrosse. She is very committed to both of these activities. She received the award for most improved in her junior year. She has participated in several other clubs, including the Spanish club, newspaper, and the debate team. Mary's GPA is 4.0, and that is not easy to do at our school. I have been very impressed with her diligence and work ethic. She constantly shows up to class on time and masters the material. I am glad to have her in my class. There is no doubt in my mind that Mary will add to your campus. I recommend her without reservation. We will not have any sense of remembering this person from this letter. Didn't hurt him, but it sure didn't uplift and bring them forward. So over here, problems with the letter. Basically says nothing that we don't already know from the transcript or the application. Gives no insight to her leadership. Gives no insight into course load or intensity. Very vague general statements, really no um, enthusiasm. No mention of teachers, qualifications, background, context. I will tell you, we get lots like this. Here's an example of what you should never do. It is the same letter and that happens more than you will ever know. So this is two letters written by the same teacher to the same institution about two different students. The entire letter goes three more paragraphs and every word is, everything is identical. I would almost go as far as to say educational malpractice. I mean, it is not doing the responsibility that the student deserves. It's when you start saying, this was the best student I've ever had, and it's in every letter, or I recommend that this student be admitted under any circumstance, that's where every student you have, I'm sure, is that you wouldn't recommend the same. What makes an excellent letter of recommendation? I think the recommender really needs to understand the student and can tell a story. That's the critical piece. It's not facts and figures. It's tell us a story of how a student did X or Y, but why was that important and how did it help the environment, the home environment, the work environment, the educational environment, but the recommender needs to understand the student. Some of the best have been when there have been early issues of discord and how that student has matured and realized what they need to do over time. And then this recommender has that ability to walk us through that and that we feel the maturity of the student. Here are excerpts from an excellent letter of recommendation. Bob is well respected by our faculty, especially by those who take the time for discussion and interaction with students. His English teacher writes, quote, a nationally ranked tennis player, I have always thought that he brings his professional dedication and focus to school with him, for he appears older than his years and far more collected. He is one of those students who at any moment can be expected to provide that one answer a teacher needs to seal off a discussion topic and move on to the next point, end quote. I mean, that's really starting to tell us the kind of student he is. Um, we've also interjected a couple of things here that I thought were quite impressive. They're pulling in other disciplines and they're making one recommendation. Now two people are endorsing that student. He is a reflective, thoughtful young man who takes the time to evaluate his own actions and his own value system. Bob's recent involvement in co-founding a new charitable organization helped him to understand why genuine politicians and philanthropists do what they do and how selfish he had been previously in being content to live in his, quote, little world with his own friends and family. 
This type of soul-searching is unusual in my opinion, as most teens seem too busy competing for high grades, studying for SAT exams, or too wrapped up in their own material world to take the time for quiet reflection and self-evaluation. That's quite a gifted student as you start thinking about how they process and think through their day and what they would add in a classroom. So now we're starting, in my mind, to really getting to understand and know who Bob is. And the teacher saw that growth and then actually contextualized it and compared it to her experience with other students where maybe that depth wasn't there. What if I'm a teacher and I don't know the student that well? If you do not know the student in a way you can talk about experiences, maturity, their thinking process, their ability to draw concepts to come together, you really need to have the courage to tell the student, I probably am not the best one to write this letter for you. I know that's hard, and, um, but in the long run you're doing that student a favor if you cannot really speak pretty intimately about their, who they are and their experiences. What if the student I'm writing for isn't the best or the brightest in my class? My experience has been in writing letters is I will get those applicants or those students that, will, that I enjoy, that I like, that I will want to write well for, but are not the very best student. And that's okay. But what is unique about that student? Because how you write the uniqueness of that student is how we look at fit. helping us understand who the human being is. And that's the key.